Get ready for the feature presentation. And now, in my daddy, ready a big fight, and his best buddy, Lord James. Podcast time. Thanks for spending your time listening to one of these or many of these. Again, with these podcasts, you can go to 955-icon.com and click on the podcast section, and there's a separate tab for the Marty and Friends podcast. There's a YouTube channel for it coming soon to a major motion picture network near you. I don't know. That is my best friend of over 20 years, <laughs> Stu James, right there. This is another one of those Super Bowl conversations, but this is not about the game. So if you want football X's and O's, this is not the podcast for you. This is a fun one, though, because we're going to relive a lot of memories for you from past Super Bowls. Here's what we're going to cover in this podcast. We're going to cover Super Bowl halftime shows from the past and really when it became the spectacle that it is and memorable national anthems in the Super Bowls. Those two things. Again, we are covering things around the actual game. But it's just as much of the experience as everything else, right? I don't think it started out that way. Oh, well, no, it didn't start out that way because back in the day, the halftime show and the national anthems and stuff were pretty much covered by marching bands. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go back to the 60s. Or super groups like Up With People. Most people won't even know who that is. Yes, they do. Yes, we know who that is. You, could you not, don't know. You could not name one member of Up With People. No, no, the group was too big. It was like 60, 80 people. Oh, was it? See, yes. That tells you what I know, which is nothing. Yeah, well, you were too hip for <laughs> Up With People. <laughs> That's why. We will go over again this year's lineup as far as the National Anthem and the Halftime Show goes. National Anthem this year covered by Gladys Knight. Should be amazing. I don't see any problem there. Uh, halftime she show. didn't invite the pips. I guess not. I don't know what the <laughs> current relationship status is there with the Pips. You know how that goes. Sorry, with I these, had to go. I with had to these groups, you know how that goes. Yeah, I know. You know, Kiss is still fighting all these years later. Yeah. Journey's still not getting along with Steve Perry. I could go on and on. No, that's not. Peter Cetera really not talking with uh, the kids over there in Chicago still. <laughs> hey, that's Brooks good. and Dunn are talking. That, that's that, all that, that matters. That's right. They're still talking. That's good. And, of course, Maroon 5 with the halftime show. But let's go back, first of all. We'll start with halftime shows. If you go back, the first, I want to say the first halftime show that would have a major impact. But we're going to go back and start with 1991. This is the Super Bowl that was in Tampa. This particular halftime show featured new kids on the block and a lot of Disney characters, too, involved around that. But it was new kids on the block. Now, here's why I say it was big. New kids on the block. For the younger generation, especially at that point in time, they're the hottest thing ever. You know, you bring that up, and I don't really remember this halftime show, and I think I know why, because you were telling me a little bit ago that this was interrupted. Yeah, during the halftime show, and they only showed a condensed version of it because ABC news coverage had to come in with Operation Desert Storm that was going on. So they had to do a special cut-in or whatever during the halftime show. So you did not get to see all of the halftime show. That's probably why I don't remember. And I was not a big New Kids on the Block fan. So, And then there was like a lot of Disney characters. Warren Moon was part of it. So it wasn't what it is now with just a concert. It was still more of a show. So was Warren Moon out there with New Kids on the Block cutting a rug? (laughs) Was he getting down? Here's the great thing about this. You can go back on YouTube and watch every one of these that we're going to talk about. I want to see Warren Moon out there doing some moonwalking with New Kids on the Block. This is the Marty and Friends podcast. That's Stu James right over there. Uh, My name is Marty McFly. So there you go. 91, I want to say, is where we're going to start. Now let's move on to 92. Do you remember who it was in 92? I can't believe I can't remember who this is. The halftime show must not have been as big of a spectacle back then as it is now. This was Gloria Stefan was the headliner for that. With this particular halftime show, In Living Color, the comedy show on Fox, was one of the hottest things going on. And Fox put a special episode of In Living Color on during the halftime show, trying to draw away the younger audience from that halftime show. So that was one of the things, one of the stories going on with that. We move on to 93. This is really when the halftime show became... Exactly the huge monstrous thing it is now, which for a long time after this artist did it, everybody wanted to line up and do it. So this is probably the one date that we can point at on the calendar and go, okay, this is when it became a spectacle. Yes, a spectacle. That's a good word for it, Stuart. Yes, this is the one Michael Jackson did. 
And after Michael Jackson did it, then the stars were all in to want to do the halftime show if they weren't before. But yeah, Michael did it, increased the TV ratings by a significant amount. Have to remember Michael Jackson at the time. I don't think there was a bigger name, was there? 93? No. 94 was the country year. The Super Bowl was in Georgia in 94, just like it is this year. Now, I do remember that there had been a lot in previous years. There had been a lot of, um, I don't know, rumblings that they hadn't had a country performer on the Mm -hmm. halftime show. So the NFL, well, they went that way with Clint Black, Tanya Tucker, Travis Stewart, and the Judds. And a slew of other people around that, too, at the end of that. But, yeah, it was a little bit of everybody. We move on from the country extravaganza during the halftime show in 94. And I'm going to go through some of these quickly, get to some of the bigger ones, because we want to talk about the best and the worst. But I wanted to start it at really where it started becoming the spectacle. So I think New Kids on the Block, we talked about in 91, made it like this huge pop culture thing. But when Michael Jackson did it in 93, that's when it moved it up a notch. We're going to move on, though. 95, not a whole lot to talk about. It was weird. It was Patti LaBelle and a whole Indiana Jones thing going on there. So we'll just kind of keep moving on here. Taking a cue from the Michael Jackson performance in 96, Diana Ross was the headliner. Now, I don't know what it was about that one that I remember so, but I remember her doing that. Then you move on to 97. It was another weird one with the Blues Brothers and ZZ Top. And it's a slew of a lot. See, that was just bad. I'm sorry. That was bad. Uh, Then uh, 98, it was a salute to Motown with Smokey Robson, Martha Rees, Temptations, Boys to Men, part of that one, Motown's 40th anniversary. Nothing wrong with that because... That was um, pretty cool. Then Gloria Stefan was back in 99 with Stevie Wonder. You go on to 2000. I'm going to start moving forward here pretty quick. 2000, it was Phil Collins. I'm sure it was good. Come on, Christina Aguilera, Tony Braxton. I remember them. I don't remember Phil Collins. In 2001, I remember this one. It was Aerosmith, NSYNC, Britney Spears, among a slew of other artists there. And that was one of the best Super Bowl halftime performances there ever was. And I remember there was a lot of scuttlebutt at the time. They didn't know if Aerosmith could pull it off, but actually they did with the special guest. When we moved to 2003. To the Super Bowl halftime show. I'm sorry. Let's go with 2002. We can't skip U2. That was a pretty big deal. Yeah, that was in New Orleans. U2 performed then. Then we move on to 2003. That was Shania's year. But somebody else really stole the show. And if you have Sting performing during a halftime show, and this was the thing about that halftime show, Shania opened it and performed the most songs. Right. But then No Doubt came out with Gwen Stefani. With just a girl. And Sting did one song. But wow, think about that. I'm not taking away from Shania. She was and is and what she is. But think about that. Sting did one song. I love Shania. Nothing against her. But she did two songs. No Doubt came out and did a song. No Doubt did a song with Sting. So actually, Shania only did about 50% of the performance. Yeah, and are you going to beat Sting doing Message in a Bottle? Not really. I mean, who can beat that? Nobody. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. (laughs) Set up against you. So let's move on to uh, 2005. Paul McCartney. Which is, again, I, I don't think Paul ever does a bad show. I can't show. believe you skipped 2004 Jessica Simpson. Yeah, it was just moving around. Well, listen, I, I love Jessica, but nothing <laughs> to talk about that. It wasn't memorable. Then you follow Paul McCartney up in 2006 with the Rolling Stones. Which, again, it's the Stones. Can it be bad? No. It's just that iconic thing. This is when it really kicked into high gear, if you ask me, as far as stars. Because you have Paul McCartney. Then you had the Stones. The next year in 2007, you have Prince. Wasn't that the year that it rained yep. in the halftime yep. show? But it made it perfect for Purple Rain. Yes, he was, but he was out there soaking mm, wet, and sure. he, he showed he was a true entertainer. Yeah, everybody was soaking wet during that one. Then Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers in 2008. I said I wasn't going, going to go through all these. I'm trying not to. But then I look at these stars, and I'm like, wow. By the way, this is the Marty and Friends podcast. We're talking about Super Bowl halftime shows. 2009, it was Bruce Springsteen. Let's move forward a little bit for the sake of time. Okay. Uh, Beyonce in 2013 was a much talked about show. Just because of the controversial aspect of it. The fact that she was a little bit militant with her dance stuff and all that. It just, but it was you know, a good show. It was. You were in my house. Yeah, I was. Show. Actually, you've been in my house during several Most days. of these. Are you going to be there Sunday? Yes. Okay, we'll continue. You've got the biggest t- you, you have the biggest TV, I know. Uh, I skipped Madonna in 2012. So A lot I, of people would like that. <laughs> Skip Madonna in 2014. Bruno Mars in 2014. See, he is the perfect halftime entertainer. He is so versatile. 
Yeah, he did. I think he did a wonderful jump. Yes. Uh, then you had Katy Perry in 15 and 16. It was Coldplay, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, part of that as well. Then here we are at 17. Last year, Lady Gaga, who uh, did a wonderful job. That wasn't last year. Hang on. I'm in 2000. Yeah. Last year, I'm sorry. I get confused. There's so many. That was two years ago, Lady Gaga. Last year, Justin Timberlake. Again, Nothing wrong with Justin. People were talking about it because of the controversy with he, Justin and Janet Jackson, which I skipped over. What year was that? I, I totally skipped over the Janet had, Jackson year. He had been in timeout since the Janet incident back. I think that was two thousand five. Was wow, it? Wow, I have to six? go back. I can't believe I was trying yeah. to. I was trying to you get skipped ahead on, over a few. I was trying to get ahead on time. Yeah, and I skipped over that. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find out what year that was though. 2004. That was the Jessica Simpson one, though, that we skipped yeah. over. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. So anyway, Justin Timberlake comes back last year, did a wonderful job. So he had been in timeout for that long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a price to pay when you upset the people. Well, yeah, well, I don't blame him. Here's the cool thing. You can go back and watch most of those on YouTube if you want to refresh your memory, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know how good this one is going to be coming up this year with Maroon 5. I think it'll be okay. I think it's the best when they pair a group like Maroon 5. And, for instance, if they could have got Mick Jagger to show up for this one, that would have put it over the top. When they do those pairings, like when Sting came out. Messing with in a bottle with right, no doubt. That, that's one of those moments, right? Mm-hmm. And you just can't. I mean, that's the moments people talk about and because you have something for everybody. So don't know if one of those moments will happen this year. We'll have to see. Now, let's get into the best and the worst if we had to rank these out because several people are doing this right now, and it's a matter of opinion, obviously. But... As far as Super Bowl halftime performances... I think you have to just stop for a moment and you have to think, which ones stick out? Which ones do I remember the most? And Mm -hmm. of all of these, all of these, because I've been watching Super Bowls since I was a little guy. And he is quite old now. Shut up. We're not talking about that. (laughs) Anyway, um, Michael Jackson. That one I can still remember vividly, his performance. Michael Jackson did the Michael Jackson thing with this, and here's what I'm talking about. First of all, he had some people pop out high above the scoreboards that look like him. Mm -hmm. This is way up in the air. And then so they did that thing where they like pop up out of the ground, right? Mm -hmm. And there wasn't him. And then finally down there at the stage, he popped up out of the stage just like that and did the Michael Jackson thing, which he was one of the first people to do this on such a mass scale. People did it before, obviously, but he did the Michael Jackson thing and he just stood there for a long time. And let the momentum build. Yes. Let the the energy in the stadium build. And everybody's waiting. After he stands there, what happens next? He does one thing before, and he doesn't start performing, but he does one thing. They're, they're standing there waiting for him to move, and what's the first move he makes? He takes his sunglasses off. That's the next thing. Oh, see, I didn't remember that. I just remember him striking stand, the pose. The next thing he does, just removes his sunglasses and stands there again. And the place still going nuts. <laughs> yes. And then... Of course, you know. Then but you got to remember, this is at happen. the height of his prowess. He is probably on the top of his game. He is the number one entertainer in the world, and he's on the biggest stage. And it was nothing but lip syncing going on. Oh, of course. And we loved it. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, I'm not calling He did a great up. performance. Everybody else did that, too. I can't rank him as the best. There's too many good ones to say one is the best. That is one of the best. Like I said, Bruno Mars also comes to mind. I think yeah. he does a great job because he's a pure entertainer. He's dancing. He's singing. He's singing. He's got the whole package. Yeah, I think at the top of the list was the Michael Jackson. I think uh, U2 was at the top of the list. Just because um, they were, that's when they were on the top of their, you know, they were at the summit, the summit, and they're the biggest thing going as far as bands go, and there they are on the biggest stage. Bruno Mars, Beyonce, they all go in the top. Lady Gaga did a wonderful job. But here's the thing with the Lady Gaga performance. She did a wonderful job. Again, was that over-the-top wow factor there? I almost wish Lady Gaga had not done that show mm. and had done this year's. Think of what she could have done. Oh, with, with Bradley the, Cooper. Exactly. Yeah. She could have brought Bradley Cooper out. And granted, that is kind of a slow building song, but still she would have brought that crowd to their feet instantly. Yes, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get think chills just not. thinking about yeah, it. That would have been good. Yeah, she was really good and A Star is Born, if you haven't seen that yet. This is the Marty and Friends podcast. We're talking about Super Bowl best of, worst of halftime shows. Worst halftime shows? Yeah, well, I mean... Up with people. You know who I, and I'm a fan of theirs, but I was disappointed, maybe, I guess is a better word, with the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers halftime show. Yeah, that one let me down. They did what they did, 
but that's what they do, and right. it's just not the most exciting thing in the world. And I loved, I loved, loved, loved Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers music. Loved mm-hmm. Tom Petty and nothing. I'm not, you know. Knocking it at all. I'm knocking Tom Petty and his memory. No, not and at all. And there's a gentleman saying. who works in this building, and I think he's in this building right now, and I hate to say this, but Bruce Springsteen let me down. Yeah, well, and you, we've got a coworker listen, who would come and knock me on the head if he heard me say that. Here's pe- people with their Bruce Springsteens, and here's the deal. Um, there's nothing wrong with Bruce Springsteen, but no, 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 not at all. Th- there's people that are very religious about Bruce Springsteen. You know what right. I'm saying? Just, as far as that wow factor he can do goes, the wrong, right. he doesn't have the wow factor. Don't get me wrong. Great singer, great songwriter, for, great entertainer, but yeah, not but, on that but stage. But for some people, that was the best one ever. I, and I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. I understand where you're coming I think from. I, tell me if I'm wrong with this in, in pop culture music. Does it divide into two different categories? You've got your Springsteen people, and if you're not a Springsteen person, more than likely you're a John Mellencamp person. Well, let's bring this back into a, a world we're more familiar because with. Because I'm a Mellencamp more it's, than a Springsteen. It's still, yeah, it's kind of like the difference in are you a Garth Brooks person mm-hmm. or are you a George Strait person? Yeah, I guess two so. Two different types of entertainers, you can be both, both great in their own yeah. respect. Yeah, well, I see what you're saying. Though. Yeah. Maybe not as drastic. That same kind of thing. With some people, George Strait can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. And with some people, and Garth Brooks can do no wrong. he just stands there with his guitar. And that's fine. Yeah. yeah. And Garth runs okay. around like a madman. Let man. me ask you this one. Let me ask you this one. We're talking about Super Bowl halftime shows. I okay. wonder why George has never done a Super Bowl halftime show. When it why was hasn't Texas. Garth and ever done one? There's the bigger question. I can tell you why Garth has not done one. I don't know this exactly. This is just my opinion. But this is my podcast. I can give you my opinion. You know Too why? small a stage? No, he, because he can go out and do a network <laughs> special anytime. <laughs> he can have the whole two hours to himself. It's not, it's not a big enough audience for Garth. <laughs> uh, he can go out and do a network special anytime he wants to. That's why. Yeah, but still, doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl, yeah. it has something. It means I'd, something. I'd like to see it. All right, we're going to move on here because uh, we're running short on time. I do want to. No! I do want to mention. We mentioned halftime shows. Let's mention the national anthem performances and the most memorable ones. And you can go back. Do you remember? Charlie Pride did this in 74. We were kids. I don't remember that far back. Super Bowl in 1974, Charlie Pride sang the National Anthem. The first major star, honestly, all around to do the National Anthem would have been Diana Ross in 1982. If you ask me, though, and you go down through the list of people who have done the National Anthem, it includes Neil Diamond, Barry Manilow, Billy Joel. Garth did the National Anthem in 93. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Garth. See, uh, that's what I'm saying. I think they were priming him to do the halftime. Then he retired. Kathy Lee Gifford and Cher and Faith Hill did a wonderful national anthem in 2000. Uh, Mariah Carey, uh, Dixie Chicks, Beyonce did the national anthem in 2004. I'm not forgetting about Carrie Underwood in 2010 and Luke Bryan doing the national anthem. Luke did a great job, too, just a few years ago in 2017. The most memorable national anthem, I don't think you'll ever beat Whitney Houston in Tampa doing the national anthem that year. Two reasons for that. Number one, it was an amazing performance. Yes. But it was the whole Gulf War thing going on. That, the patriotism, her Mm -hmm. wearing the running suit that was red, white, and blue. You remember that? I don't care who you are. I don't think you'll ever beat that overall performance of the national anthem. I may be wrong, but Gladys Knight will give it a shot this weekend. So there you go. Halftime shows. National Anthems, all a part of the Super Bowl experience. Thanks for listening to another Marty and Friends podcast.